I had actually been having small, simple partial seizures where my vision had, was disturbed, but I didn't know that those were actually seizures. I had spoken to my GP about it. Um, she didn't know what it was. My epilepsy went undiagnosed for years. I started having drop seizures where I would just fall. And so I couldn't be alone. Um, one of the reasons why I was in a wheelchair, the wheelchair was for when I was in the house by myself or I had to get somewhere, I had to be in the wheelchair because I would just fall. And I started falling on my head and I, I was in the emergency room more than a few times. And um, it's a little hard for me to talk about, I guess, right now. And my husband would always, I'd have to have someone if I wanted to walk wear a helmet and I had to have someone on my left side because I'd always fall to my left. But I'd have this kind of feeling like, oh my, I'm gonna have one. And I'd say that and then everyone would kind of rush to my left side and like grab me because I'd become a dead weight. I'd be having one and I couldn't talk, I couldn't do anything and I'd, always, I'd start to moan and my arms would raise or my leg would raise or I'd start to shake. So they went from being really, really mild to these extreme seizures there was a point where I just had to let go and I'm a really fiercely independent person. But I had to let go and let other people make decisions for me. And I think that was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do was to say, yeah, okay, fine. You can, you can take over for me for a while because this disability has actually, it's, it's taken my life for me for a while. My husband drove me around the whole time we were married. Anytime I need to go to the store, grocery store, doctor's appointment, anything. I relied on him fully. I don't know, I wanted like a glass of milk, anything, he had to take me. It was horrible, like that feeling of completely relying on another human being to go anywhere anytime I wanted to get in the car. The epilepsy surgery changed my life completely. I was at a point where there was nothing else I could do. I couldn't cook, I couldn't hold my daughter. Uh, who was a baby. I couldn't change my, I couldn't put them into bed. I couldn't walk down the stairs. I couldn't read them stories. And when they said, we're going to evaluate you for surgery and see if it's a possibility, I, I started crying. I didn't know it was a, a possibility. And then it was, and I said, okay, and, and we did it. And it was scary. It was, I almost, you know, because of other health issues, I almost lost my life. But we did it. We got through it. It was two years of recovery. It was hard. But it was worth every minute. It's been four years without a seizure. I got my whole life back. I was able to do everything, be a mom, work, get my license back. I mean, everything. I feel like I got my life back from nothing. I think the common, one common misconception is that if you have epilepsy, it defines who you are. And even though I'm proud that I, you know, to be a person living with epilepsy, and it, and it, it didn't let it define me. But I wore it, you know, I wore it with pride to say, yeah, you know, I was a person living with epilepsy. And that's something that I think people should realize, that it's not something that needs to rule your life, but it's something that you should take into consideration and say, yeah, you know what, I'm proud of it. I'm going to own it. I think it's really important to have family that supports you. That's what got me through it, to be honest, the support network. Always, if you, I mean, I would recommend anyone to reach out to those local agencies, FLPC Ontario, FLPC Toronto, or their local groups. They're incredible. And the support networks there, the support groups there are great. Go use those resources. <laughs>